Given the realities of the Ukrainian-Russian war, the issue of protecting Ukrainian airspace is an acute one. And thanks to the large number of missiles they have, Russia shells civilian cities and infrastructure with virtual impunity. But very soon, Ukraine will have for itself a setup which is radically changing this situation. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in our video today. The Norwegian Dance Surface to Air Missile System, or NASAMS, is a short and medium range air defense system, which was developed in tandem on the Norwegian firm Krongsberg Defense and Aerospace, along with the American company Raytheon. Its main targets are primarily aircraft, helicopters, cruise missiles, UAVs, and UCAVs. The development of the system started back in the 1990s, whenever the Norwegian Air Force needed a worthy successor to the US-based Raytheon MIM-23 Hawk anti-aircraft missile system, better known as the Norwegian Adapted Hawk, or NOAA. This ended up being converted by the country according to its own modernization scheme, and unlike its predecessor, the NASAMS is capable of simultaneously tracking and hitting more targets, despite the fact that its operation requires four times less maintenance personnel and the complex's reaction time and transport to and from combat was even greatly reduced. Additionally, let us not forget about the high degree of unification done on NASAMs, thanks to which personnel were able to interface with other advanced weapons. Field tests with the installations were carried out in 1993, and from 1998 onward, the air defense system began to enter service with the Norwegian Air Force, moving into a state of international operational readiness. Ever since the advent of the first generation of NASAMs in service, the system has been continuously developed. Teams of engineers have done a monumental job in modernizing these defensive weapons. By 2000, the air defense system's designers presented an improved modification of NASAMs, known as the NASAM-2, and was put into operation six years later. And in 2010, the third generation was finally installed and developed. This time, though, the time to being put into service turned out to be a bit longer, having taken about nine years. NASAMs do differ from other quote-unquote colleagues at the office primarily in its net-centric architecture, multiple simultaneous engagements, and BVR, or Beyond Visual Range capabilities, which are closely integrated with other systems and command and control centers of the Norwegian Army. Thus, a network with these air defenses significantly expands the territory they protect, which increases the overall combat effectiveness of the armed forces. The standard NASAMs do have a modular design, consisting of a Fire Distribution Center, or FDC, command post, an AN-MPQ-64F1 Sentinel Active 3D Radar, plus advanced passive electronic optional and infrared sensors, and an advanced air-to-missile, the AIM-120 Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Missile, or AR-RAM. Earlier, the traditional air system defense was located at one facility, and this is where the command and control tower was. Weapons and search radars, as well as a missile battery, were located. But, in the case of the NASAMs, the military was given the opportunity to deploy an air defense system over an area of, get this, 7 kilometers, and an even greater distance. Due to all of this, the control became possible at a distance of up to 15.5 miles from the control center, making it extremely difficult for hostile forces to detect as well as neutralize such systems. Even if they did manage to hit one or more parts of the NASAMs, the rest will still be able to function. Another distinguishing feature of NASAMs is that it doesn't make use of high radar effects so as to monitor the missile on its trajectory towards the target. This would simply reveal the location of the system itself. Instead, NASAMs have acquired a rotating radar with low effect, which guides the missile initially until its own radar, quote unquote, takes over. Combined with the latest passive sensors and high mobility, this makes NASAMs virtually irreversible to adversaries. Well, let's take a closer look now at the air defense components, shall we? The FDC is a time-based BMC-4I, also known as Battle Management Command, Control, Communications, Computers, and Intelligence Control Module for Air Defense and Surface-to-Surface -surface Missiles, or SSMs. It's been an open software and hardware architecture which does allow you to enable fully netted and distributed operations, as well as introduce new tech and capabilities into the generation of NASAMs. 
The FTC is the C2 node of the air defense system and provides BMC4I functionally for any true mixed as well as layered air defense system configuration in national and multinational scenarios. Plus, there's over 200 FDCs to date and have been delivered as a BMC4I module for the NASAM programs, the Naval Strike Missile Control Defense System, or NSM DCS, HAWK, and BOCs. The ANMPS-64 Sentinel is an electronically controlled 3D pulse Doppler radar system which is used to alert and guide short-range air defenses, or SHORAD, to the location of enemy targets. The system is often deployed on a Humvee equipped with an onboard generator, but the radar can also work autonomously, communicating with the fire control center via a broadband fiber optic communication line, along with transmitting data being the SINGSGARS radio network. The Sentinel does support multiple command and control interfaces, providing consistent aerial surveillance data on the approach of enemy air defenses, aircraft, helicopters, and cruise missiles. Nowadays, the US Army and Allied forces have deployed more than 300 of these radars around the world, and the NASAMS-2 modification has even received an updated version of the AN-MPQ-64F1 improved Sentinel. Back in October of 2021, the Raytheon Missile and Defense System also introduced a new S-band medium-range AESA radar for air and missile defense, known as Ghost IMR, formerly known as LTAMDS, or Lower Tier Air and Missile Defense Sensor. This announced that it would be installed in NASAMS and be a new modification for the third version. The Ghost Eye technology itself was originally developed by Raytheon specialists for the MEM-104 Patriot Air Defense Systems, which are fully capable with NASAMs. The AIM-120 AR RAM is an all-weather American air-to-air -air missile and the most popular long-range missile in the world. AMRAM is a continuation of the AIM-7 Sparrow missile series and for NASAMs has become a replacement for the MIM-23B missiles, which were actively used by the previous generation of air defense, which were in service with Norway until 1998. The AIM-120 turned out to be a lot faster, smaller, and lighter than its predecessors and also had better performance when working on low-altitude targets. As soon as the missile approaches the target, its active radar instinctively directs to intercept. This feature, known as Fire and Forget, was another advantageous difference between the AMRAM and Sparrow. In the first generation of NASAMs, the AMRAM was launched from a towed launcher with six missile containers, which had integrated launch rails, which ranges going anywhere from 9 to 25 miles. Shooting the six missiles from one launcher is then carried out in a matter of seconds, and by developing a whole battery of 12 such air defense systems, the military can launch 72 missiles within a mere 12 seconds. The US Marine Corps and US Army even tested the launch of the AIM-120 from a six rail carrier mounted on the Humvee as part of the CLAWS, or Contemporary Low Altitude Weapon System, and SLAMRAM, the surface-launched AMRAM programs. But later, both ended up being canceled due to many budget cuts. A later upgraded MK2 cluster did end up launching with NAMSAM's 3 modification and was actually taught to also launch AIM-9X Sidewinder Block 2 and AMRAM ER short-range missiles with an increased range of up to 31 meters. In March of 2022, Raytheon had also confirmed that in the future, the HELS, also known as High Energy Laser Weapon Systems, could potentially accomplish the rockets in NASAMs, which would be connected to air defense to effectively destroy a swarm of drones. As of 2020, there were 12 NASAM operational in the world, including Spain, the Netherlands, Finland, Australia, Lithuania, Indonesia, and others. Future operations even include Hungary, Qatar, and Taiwan. But the country where NAMSAMs is virtually needed today is Ukraine, which has bravely repelled the attack of the Russian occupying forces for well over seven months now. During this time, the invaders have carried out more than 3,500 missile strikes on the territory of Ukraine, with only a minimum of these falling on military targets. Most of these missiles have claimed thousands of civilian lives and do continue to destroy civilian infrastructure. In July of this year, the U.S. had helped to seek help its allies with the framework of the Ukrainian Security Assistance Initiative, or USAI. 
and announced that they would be allocating a military assistance budget of about $820 million, which ended up including two NASAM air defense systems. And in August of 2022, they added six more just such systems with $2.98 billion of aid in a package. At the end of July, the Department of Defense announced the start of a formal acquisition of NASAM to protect Ukraine. This regarded about two batteries or 12 mobile launchers with six missiles on board. At the end of August this year, it became known that the Pentagon signed a contract with Raytheon for the supply of NASAMs to Ukraine to the tune of about $182 million. The company in turn had confirmed this in an official press release on the website. But what the price of one such installation will be is still a mystery, given that a certain part of the funds will go to the missiles for air defense missiles, the cost of which the AIM-120D modifications exceeds well over $1.78 million. We do hope that the air defense transfer process will be concluded before the end of autumn, allowing the civilians of Ukraine to sleep peacefully, knowing that their skies are under reliable protection. So what do you think? Will NASAMs be able to help Ukraine cut the sky off from Russian evil spirits? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and of course, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, ding that notification bell for more content just like this, and until next time folks, we'll see you later.